Hi everybody and welcome to Z Code System Sports Picks. Here we develop and share automated systems to help you win, not just win, but we can win help you win big and win big consistently. So as we are into the second week of April, we have reached the second week in the major league baseball season. So there's a lot of interesting matchups going on at the moment and the one that tops the list this weekend is the Milwaukee Brewers against the Los Angeles Dodgers. And we have three other uh, series that we're going to look at as well. So we're going to get started here. So you see I'm at the uh, VIP club section here. And we're going to go down through here and look at some of these matchups. So again, the first one I want to look at is Milwaukee and Los Angeles Dodgers. So I have to scroll down through here until I find that one. So let's just go down through here. You see all the matchups are listed here. But I'm only going to pick the, the top ones that I feel for this weekend. So we'll go down through here. And we will get to there we go. Milwaukee Brewers and Los Angeles Dodgers. Now this is just for the uh, Friday's game, but I will talk about the whole series in general. So both teams are at, currently at eight and three on the season, first place in their respective divisions. So if you look at the Brewers, their their stats is currently average, while the Dodgers are burning hot down. If you look at the power ranking indicator of the, these two teams, you see that Los Angeles continues to go up, and they're up at plus twenty nine. The Brewers were at 21.9, and now they are down. They've been steady at 26 for the last couple of days. But both teams are near the top of the league, which is expected with an 8-3 mark. If you look here at the head-to-head -head matchup, they have not played each other yet this season. That's not of any importance. If you look here at the totals predictor, if you want to bet on the over-under in this game, if you look here, um, Milwaukee is, you know, Milwaukee's games are going slightly under. But if you look at the Dodgers, they are very much over at the moment. So you might want to tend towards the over in this one or just avoid betting at all since the Brewers are tending under so it could balance each other out. So that's what you want to look at as far as the over under goes for this series. Um, a bunch of other things we can look at here too. If we look at the volatility oscillator. This tells how stable the two teams are so far this season. Dodgers are already at Plus three, so they're much more stable than the Brewers, which means they're performing more closely to what their favorite underdog status is compared to the Brewers. Okay, so that's one thing to take into consideration also. So if you look at the pitcher profit oscillator here, this shows you how the two pitchers are faring. Now, of course, in this one here, it's only showing uh, Corbin Burns. He is on the mound for Milwaukee, and it's showing that he is at minus seven. So he has not been a very profitable bet here. And... If you go through the whole weekend's games, you can see the uh, profits for all the, the ones that are scheduled. So if I look at the um, scheduled starters, um, Zach Davis is scheduled on Saturday, the Brewers, and his profit margin, his pitcher profit oscillator, is at plus uh, 1,547. So he is an excellent bet. Jules Chassin on Sunday for the Brewers is at plus 375. He is also a good bet. The Dodgers, Julio Urias, on Friday is plus 54, so he's a moderate bet. Uh, Saturday is undecided for the Dodgers as far as on the mound goes, and Ross Stripling is has been a very poor bet at minus 479 profit on Sunday. So take that into consideration as well when you're considering betting on this weekend's games. So in general, though, the Dodgers being at home, they will have a slight advantage. No team will uh, sweep the series. I don't think the Dodgers sweep. I think the Dodgers will win the series, though, and take two out of three. But this is the matchup to watch for this weekend. So another one I wanted to look at is the Philadelphia Phillies and the Miami Marlins. I believe they were up here. I remember passing through them as I was scrolling down through the list. Here we are, Philadelphia Phillies at Miami Marlins. The Phillies are off to a 7-2 start. They're burning hot. The Marlins, on the other hand, are only 3-7 and seven with a dead status. Now, if you look at the power rankings indicator, the Phillies should be much higher, and of course they are. The Phillies are at plus 24, and the Marlins are all the way down here at plus 6. If you look here at the head-to-head, -head, teams have not met yet this season, which is not a surprise since it's very early going yet. If you look at the totals predictor, if you're looking to bet the over and under, the Phillies, are, Phillies games are trending over slightly after trending way over early on when they were scoring a whole lot of runs. And the Marlins, they are also trending over. So it's it's a pretty safe bet to go over in this one if you're betting the over-under. 
Okay, so let's take a look now again at the uh, volatility oscillator to see how stable the two teams are. If you, if you notice here, both at plus four are both pretty much performing as your favorite underdog status indicates. So that's a good sign for the Phillies, even though they're on the road. They are probably going to be the road favorites in this one, at least in some of the games. Let's look at the pitcher profit oscillator and see if there's anything for, this Friday, for the Friday's matchup. You see the Jake Arrieta and, the, and Sandy Alcantara. Arietta is in the plus at plus 706. And if you go over here to uh, Alcantara, he is uh, barely in the positive here. Actually, he's at minus nine, so he's, he's been a very poor bet. So Arietta is in the much better, better bet in that first game. In the second game, Zach F1 is plus 54 for the Phillies. Caleb Smith is at plus 515. So that's the best bet for the Marlins to win a game in this series is on Saturday. Neither team on Sunday. Uh, excuse me, neither pitcher in Sunday's matchup. Vince Velasquez or, and Jose Arena are good bets. They're both well in the negative. So that game is kind of a toss-up, but I would put the edge to the Phillies because they are the better overall team. Pick the Phillies to win two out of three games in this series. We're going to take a look at uh, two more matchups here. We got, let's see which one here, the Oakland A's and the Texas Rangers. The A's are coming in at 6 and 8. They've played 14 games already. They're tired. Okay, and they have not done well lately. If you look at their streak here, they lost 5 out of their last 6, and that's why they have a dead status. The Rangers are 5 and 5. They are averaged down. You notice that they have uh, lost their last 3, and they're 3 and 3 over their last 6. If you look at the power ranking indicator, you see that both teams are trending down. Texas is still has a plus 16 to plus 8 advantage on that, on that oscillator, though. Um, if you want to look at the totals predictor on this one, you see that Oakland is trending under by the red line, and you see that Texas here is trending over with the red line above the blue line. So since they are one's under, one's over, I would avoid betting the over/under on this one because they pretty much can't cancel each other out. If you look at the pitcher profit oscillator, we can look at it for the first game here. For the first game, you see that, well, it's not showing up anything, actually, because I guess that on this, it's not showing what the pitching matchups are. I looked at the pitching matchups on ESPN.com. They list the pitching matchups for the three games in the series. Uh, Mike Byers, uh, Marco Estrada, and Brett Anderson are scheduled to go for Oakland. Only Fires has a high profit margin on the pitcher profit oscillator. He's at plus 1588. Uh, Estrada is also in the green, not as high, but uh, Anderson is a very poor bet at minus 530. Uh, Drew Smiley and Shelby Miller are very poor bets for the Rangers, and they're undecided for Saturday. So I'm thinking the Oakland A's have a good chance of winning this series. Probably will win, too. Probably will not sweep. Okay, let's look down here at one more matchup. We're going to go Cleveland and Kansas City. Cleveland here. Is burning hot. You see what they have done lately. They have won five out of their last six. Right here. If you look at Kansas City, they're dead and they have lost six straight. And in fact, they are two and seven on the season, while Cleveland is at six and three. If you look at the power ranking indicator, this will also show that trend. Cleveland is at plus 20, and Kansas City, after starting off pretty high here at plus 21 back on April 3rd, have a swift decline. They're down to plus three now because of their losing skid. If you look at the um, over and under here, the total predictor, you see that Cleveland is slightly over here, the red line above the blue line. And you see Kansas City is well over the red line above the blue line. So I'm thinking that since both of their teams, both the teams trending over in their ball games, an over is a very good bet in this one. If you look at the stability here, let's go to the uh, volatility oscillator here. If you look at team stability, Cleveland is at plus by there, the mo much more stable team. They're going to be the favorites in this one. That's a very good indication to put their put the bet on them because they have been performing much more consistently according to their favorite underdog status. If you look at the pitcher, pitcher profit oscillator for the first game here, this is for Cleveland. This is Carlos Carrasco. He's at minus 451. You see, he's, he's really been up and down and more on a downward trend lately. So he hasn't been exactly a very good bet. Uh, Brad Keller is scheduled to go for Kansas City. He is a plus 346. 
So that is the edge for Kansas City in the first game. And really, if you look at all of the pitchers that are scheduled, Mike Clevenger, Corey Kluber for Cleveland, Homer Bailey, and Jacob Junis for um, Kansas City, none of them are good bets. All of them are in the negative except for Junis, slightly positive on the pitcher profit oscillator. But the key is that Kansas City is a much more uh, talented team at the moment, and they're trending better. So go for them to win this series. They're likely not going to sweep. They could sweep, but I think Kansas City takes one game on Friday. Okay, so if you don't want to go through all this stuff here and go through all the numbers and all the, the um, oscillators, there's another way you can go about your betting. You go to the top performing automated systems here. You can select your sport. This is all sports, but since we're doing baseball, you could select baseball. And here there's only one listed right now, but anyway, you can see what's happening here. Right here, this is the return on investment and explains what that means. And that's at 45.8. And this is the average deviation square. Again, it tells you what it means in the, in the yellow and, and the trust factor. And then the biggest thing here is the profit. The profit here at 7,550. And you can actually click on one. You can see the net profit graph. So it's really very good. If you don't want to limit yourself just to the baseball one, you could go to all sports and see in general which are the top systems.